Y'all, listen. Most of the people watching this video have no idea, okay? You don't know. Here's the thing. This may not be the rarest game in the world. This may not be the most valuable game in the world. And it's definitely not a popular game. But it is, I think, it could very well be the most obscure point-and-click adventure game that was ever put on the PC. Ever. This is it. You have never played this game. No. Shut up. You haven't. No. You've never played this game before. Nobody, for the most part, even knows that this game exists. If you Google it, you don't see, like, any forum post on some retro game forum saying, Hey, you remember this game? And everybody's like, yeah, or no, or yay, or nay, you know? No, there's none of those. Literally none of the four pages of Google search results had fucking a forum on it. Except for two people... Two people who had, in 2010, had recently heard about this game and never had any uh, knowledge about it before, and now wanted the game. And the reason they wanted that game is because of a little event that happened in 2010, which blew the YouTube poop community away. Food. 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 Go to the kitchen. It's crunchy, munchy, delightful, divine. I just love eating shit all of the time. When the king is in his county, damn the queen is in county. Oh no, you didn't. You know, I once watched the king. Muggins! I'll do the work, and you take the dick in the bus. Exactly! Trolls need lots of things to troll to make their sad small lives complete. <laughs> okay, so the vast majority of my audience know what YouTube poop is, so I don't have to explain that for you. But in 2010, a wonderful person named Insector made that video I just showed you there, and it's a lot longer than what I showed. It, it pained me to edit it down. So a lot of my subs are jumping up and down, yay, yay, yay about this, but some of you who are watching this video have no idea what this is and what this is about, so... This is a super obscure budget bargain bin PC game by the name of... Get ready for this. <gasps> Only the Brave Can Rescue the Kidnapped Princess. You think that title's long enough? It was made in 1997 by some company called Omni Media, which specialized in budget bargain bin PC games. Most of the game was designed by a guy named Martin Koronka, I hope I'm saying that right, who apparently wrote, directed, did the art design and music of this game. He almost made the whole game. Now that's all that I learned from reading the CD, which by the way comes with a soundtrack. And apparently there was a special edition of this game that not only had a soundtrack, but it also had stickers, a playbook, a cassette version of the soundtrack with the CD, and the box itself was a little toy castle. Well, they really wanted this to be something special, didn't they? In fact, they showed this game off at E3 in 1997. I know this because I found an ancient article on an ancient website from June 1st, 1997, saying people that owned the website did an interview with Omni Media, and they were talking about how they had this brand new game called Mystery of the Missing Princess, which which was the American version of the Kidnapped Princess. I know this because if you search only the Brave Can Rescue the Kidnapped Princess PC game on Google, you get next to nothing. It was only when I searched its alternate title did I find search results. Like, no wonder nobody's heard of this game. They don't even know what it's called. And you want to know what's worse? When you turn the game on, it says this. Welcome to the Kidnapped Princess from Omnimedia. I know hackers with less aliases than this. What is the name of this game? Well, my physical copy is called Mystery of the Missing Princess. But for sanity's sake, and because it rolls off the tongue better, it's going to be called Kidnap Princess. That's your name. All right, kids, strap yourselves in, because here we go. So right off the bat, the graphics look like Great Value King's Quest. We start off with a bit of a long intro cutscene, as these point-and-clicks do. Wait, 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 back up, back up. Back up, back up. This duck has seen shit. Did I mention this has a soundtrack? Uh, it was nowhere to be seen. His castle was quite damn. The 
queen and all around the rise vanished in thin air. Ew, that stock Windows MIDI drum and that horrible guitar playing sounds like I made it in Mixcraft in five minutes. I have explosive diarrhea and I'm proud. Also, do we have anybody in here that remembers the unfitting music fad? Well, I've got something for that. Okay, I don't know what music fits somebody just walking beside somebody, but that's not it. So the plot of this game is pretty simple. You basically have to find out where a princess went off to. Now to do this, you have to guide a duck around JPEGs of a castle. The voice of this wizard guy will pop up now and again to tell you things he wants you to find. It's almost like a little scavenger hunt in a point and click game. When you find the area or the thing he wants you to find, a cutscene will play. Where's my supper? It's Ready, dear. I may look like I taste good, but I don't. Well, Lucky, you will do for another time. Okay, these people are fucked up. This duck is obviously their pet, and for supper they're going to cook their damn pet? Roscoe, I swear the moment I run out of pizza rolls... Paige, fetch my daughter! I'll fetch the girl that's loved the most from mountaintop to long flat coast. Yeah, there's this one guy that every time he talks, he sings with a crappy Windows MIDI behind him. His name is Jonathan the Page. Wonder if he's related to Stephen Page. Booba dooba dooba! You're having a stew. What? What are you looking at me for? Go to the kitchen, bitch. I'm sorry, I can't unhear it. One thing I should note is the sound director of this got every CD of the Hanna-Barbera sound effects library, and damn it, he's going to use every sound. <laughs> right here, there must be 20 sound effects in this one scene. <laughs> Rest his soul, but I don't think Kitty0706 had this many sounds. Even Mike Mozart's going, dude, quit. Now, where would I hide a note? Come to think of it, I'd probably choose the kitchen. Now and again, you do get to play as the characters in the game. Moving them is kind of weird. You don't use the arrow keys and you don't click on a location. It depends where your mouse cursor is at on the screen where your character moves. Who came up with that dumb idea? Interactive designer Robert Mettler. Well, Robert, fuck you. Another weird thing is, especially in this kitchen, there's a couple of doors that don't actually go anywhere. You can can't click on them. Was this game not finished or something? And back to the weird sound effects again, listen to when the wizard talks. I'd like your magisterial holiness to consider various aspects of the English language. When I first heard this, I thought the wizard had like a lisp or something, but it turns out that's the sound effect of his beard going up and down. I think that an appreciation of those words... For real, why did that need a sound effect? Now he sounds like he has a lisp. Which is aggravating, because I can't stand people with weird habits or tics in their voice. Voice. Oh. Now that we've wasted enough time in this video, I think it's time we get to the part that made this game amazing. Food has always been the king's strongest point. Crunchy, munchy, delightful, divine. I just love eating all of the time. Take a look at this jolly fuck who will eat literally anything that's put in front of him. I love my food. All of my food. Listen, this needs to be an animated GIF that gets spammed everywhere. Isn't there any more? And now a duck covered in horse shit. Ugh, yuck! That is revolting! You notice something missing here? Gameplay. There's not really much gameplay in this game other than the scavenger hut part, at least for a while. I said not now, Longsword! Yeah, this guy here, his name is Longsword. He better have a long sword. He ain't much to look at. You know what they say about people with long swords? No, I'm asking, what do they say about people with long swords? That king's one of those guys, you know? Well, Muggins! Oh, we're just gonna interrupt the duck? Oh, okay. The game does get janky sometimes, and I wonder if this is an error in the game, or if my emulator isn't acting quite right. Like, watch what happens here. Kinging and things. Sometimes I'll find I'm Search his room. What the hell happened there? It's like she was going to sing a song and changed her mind? Stop that, stop that. You're not going into a song while I'm here. Speaking of songs, the wizard Muggins also has his own song in the game that you get to listen to if you want to. And it has this one particular lyric in it that I swear he says 
Well, just listen. And a burr of rabbit's fur. Uh, well, I go, what? Rabbit's fur. Rabbit's fur. Rabbit's fur. Jeez, I didn't expect to hear that in a kid's game. I just imagined this guy grabbing up a rabbit and, oh, 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 I need my brain cleaned out. I think he'd rather not go down there. So after what seems like hours of cutscenes, we finally get to a part where we actually get to play the game. It doesn't totally spell it out for you, but what you've got to do is highlight all the roads and find out which one has the sound of hoof beats from a horse. As it turns out, you don't actually die in this game. There's no life lives or anything, so if you mess up, you get to try again. Get yourselves in walking gear, cause this is one path that is clear. Oh yeah, remember that guy? Yeah, you're gonna see a lot more of him now. The good news is, now that they're finally out of the castle and moving around and stuff, we finally get to parts of the game that we can play. Where are my armies? Just above your handies. <laughs> This part isn't too hard. You just get the right pieces for the drawbridge and put it all together. It's all like a little Rube Goldberg machine. That troll is a truly horrid beast. I think everybody has that one somebody they can make that a reference to. And here we are again, moving the mouse cursor to make the king walk. You get used to it, but that doesn't make it less weird. I don't need luck. On this part, you're just trying to find a merchant that sells what the troll wants, and then when he give it to him, you can go past him. Cream cakes. Okay. The next thing you have to do is get the troll some teeth, which is weird enough, but you have to go to a dentist to get them, and this happens. Will you let this man have your teeth? Well, I will never trust another dentist as long as I live. I'm going British, baby. So throughout most of this game, it's been pretty easy, pretty slow paced. And, you know, you can't die in the game, so it's not like it's hard or anything. And even though most of the game is like that, there's one spot that is not. And there is no fucking excuse for this one part of the game to be so bullshit. See how we're gonna get up there. Got no elevating powers, no means of climbing tall stone towers. Why can't you talk like the rest of us? A mangonel! So there's this mini game where you have to put all the characters on a catapult and get them to fall inside of the tower up there. You can go first then, Jonathan! Well, who's going to go first then? You can go first then, Jonathan! When you're ready, then I figure you press down on that old trigger. When I press down on this old trigger, I will catapult this. Guys, come on, I'm better than that. Anyway, it took me a while to figure out how this catapult thing works, but here's the deal. You can hold down on the mouse button and adjust how powerful the catapult flings somebody, and you can also angle the catapult in different directions. That's simple enough, but here's where it gets complicated. You see that flag on top of the tower? There's wind in this game, and the wind blows in the direction that that flag is going. Now, they put that flag there to tell you which direction the wind is blowing so you can compensate for where the wind is blowing and move the catapult accordingly. But it only gives you like a small idea of where to aim. And depending on how powerful you pull the catapult back, it may not even work. So after about 30 minutes of this, I finally realized what's going on for real in the game. There's no set spot on where the catapult is going to land your character. And it changes every time whether you win or lose. And here's where it gets complicated. There's four different ways to power up the catapult, and then there's seven different ways to aim it. That means there is 28 different combinations of ways to shoot the catapult. So the game chooses one of those 28 combinations as the only way that you can win with that character. And it changes each fucking time you lose. So in reality, the flag doesn't tell you jack shit. You have a 1 in 28 chance of doing this right. I must have been on this one mini game for about an hour or so. I finally quit recording. Recording. The flag is barely a hint at all, really. It's all luck and it's just bull crap. Robert Mettler, kiss my fucking ass. Oh, by the way, I did finally beat it. I'm just disappointed. I'm out. I thought we were going to find her. And all, and all we get is a long walk. You're just worried about the baseball. Well, 
that as well. The next mini game involves some platforming, almost similar to Frogger. It wasn't too hard. My only complaint with it is you have to be right smack dab in the center of the platform or you're going to fall down. And this is where trying to get this to run on modern hardware rears its ugly head. Look at these spiders. They look like they've been in a big jug of Monster Energy drink. It also happened on this mini game where you're supposed to click on the places that aren't making any sound. Look at those clouds going 900 miles an hour. Is Hurricane Andrew here? Well, as it turns out, the reason it's doing that is something that a lot of old Windows games used to do. Some of those things in the game are actually reliant on the speed of the CPU. And when you've got a CPU that's like 3 gigahertz and quad core, shit like this happens. You would have thought running this in Windows 98 and VMware would have been enough to make it run right, but no, I also had to download a CPU throttler and put it inside the virtual machine. After I did that, this quit doing that. And it was thanks to doing that that I was able to actually complete this mini game, which is hell on your eyes. Oh my god. It's still running a little fast, but you should see it when it's not throttled. Oh my god, it will kill you. Look at how they tried to do a 3D perspective with all these little 2D sprites going past. So the only goal to this is to get from one end of the river to the other end. And you don't have to restart if you hit the side of the river. It's no big deal. You can just keep going. Without CPU throttling, it just infinitely hit the sides of the stream. But now you can actually control it. Are we going a little uh, fast? A little fast? Do you want to see what it looked like before? Okay. Oh shit, it's making me sick just to look at it. Oh my god. Wait a minute. But I can't turn it off. But is it getting faster? Turn it off. Get it out of here. My shit, is that... We're going too fast. Ah! Wait, wait, guys. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What? He won't return our calls? Oh, so apparently we cannot afford to have Michael J. Fox on here, so never mind. It's not that I'm impressed by big bulging muscles and sharp shiny swords. So here's the final scene in the game where you have control of what's going on. This is considered like, I guess, the final boss of the game? It's the last mini game, at least. You fight a whole bunch of soldiers by clicking on them with the magic wand there. And you see all those shields there at the bottom? You're supposed to look at the shirts they're wearing and click on the ones that have the right shields. I don't know. I guess they ran out of ideas. Also, listen to this audio. Oh, dear God, make it stop. Make it stop. Please, dear God in heaven, make it stop. I made it stop. And now we are bearing witness to the ending of this game. A very long ending, but an ending. Now, are you ready for the Hideo Kojima-style twist at the end of this freaking story? Who kidnapped the kidnapped princess? You mean you've known where she was all along? Well, yes, actually, I have. Right. Got no choice, then. Let's get on with it. Dude, I wish that's what happened. You're not going to chop my head off? Of course not! Just tell me where she is! At the castle. So here's the deal. All the little scavenger hunting and gameplay we've been having where we click on shit inside the castle, all of this happened after the events and the cutscenes in the minigames. This cutscene shows the queen telling the duck to go to the castle and look for the princess, and this is actually where the game starts. And where has the princess been all this time? In her fucking bedroom. You've found her. I, uh, I'd better go and take off this silly armor. <laughs> Besides, I, 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 I think I need the uh, uh, bathroom. <laughs> it was you! Me, your majesty? Yes, you, Longsword! Well, who then? It was us. I love Sir Longsword. Sir Willoughby, Herringbone, Scorchel, Longsword. Knight of the Order, St. Hilda, patron saint of abandoned hedgehogs. Yes, mother, I love him. And he loves me. Wait a minute, she loves the nerdy guy, the longsword guy? How long is his sword? You faked the kidnap? Well, I suppose he has got his own teeth. His own teeth and a wonderful stamp collection. So the princess was not kidnapped. Longsword dude and the princess planned all this because... Plot. 
And so the king goes to watch the Super Bowl on his medieval TV. Hurry up, man, it's getting exciting. Longsword's middle name must be Big Balls because he went up to the king and asked him if he can marry the princess. And he says yes because he wants to watch the game. Oh, don't get sentimental on me. The game's starting. Bunny snap. Smudger. Bunny snap. Smudger. Bunny snap. Smudger! I feel sick. Okay, her reaction was kind of funny. And it's here that the game comes to a close, and I'm here to say I'm probably the only person on God's green earth that has ever completed the Kidnap Princess, at least on record. Marvelous! Well done! You've solved the mystery of the missing princess. Hmm, but I suppose you think you finished. Well, you have done well, but there are many other puzzle combinations, tricks, songs, animations yet to be enjoyed. And then there's the castle itself. Do I not keep searching? So now the game is over, or is it? Now the game has turned you loose and you can now play whatever cutscene or mini game you want. So there it is. That is the Kidnap Princess. Only the Brave can save the Kidnap Princess. Mystery of the Missing Princess. Whatever the hell this game is called. From what I've been able to research, this was Omnimedia's last game, and they went bankrupt soon after. So I guess this game was such a gigantic failure, and everything was riding on this game being good, it broke them. It's kind of sad, really. It's an independent, small team of developers wanting to make little games on what was probably a shoestring budget. Like, imagine if Toby Fox and Undertale never would have become famous. This game was made by one or two people, for the most part. Undertale was made by only a couple of people. Mostly one. But that's the video game industry for you. You either make it or you don't. And it's not like this game was really all that good. I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's not. It, I would say it's mediocre. There's really not much to it. It's less of a game, really, and it's more of an interactive story. And I think that's really what hurts it. But there again, how would that hurt it? Because nobody bought it to even find out if it was bad or not. It really is the little game that couldn't. And it's sad stories like this that make me have to tell you guys this. Guys, if you see an indie game that looks even the least bit entertaining, even if you've never heard of it before, never heard of the people before, but it looks just somewhat relevant to your interests, especially if it's got a free demo, try it out. Give them a chance. Just one sale makes all the difference to a small developer. While I'm making this show, Working Man Games, it's going to be my mission to devote every now and then an episode that's just about indie games or ones that I think will become really big or need to become really big. That's why I do stuff like the Ricky and Vicky episode and the Combustion episode. That's stuff I wanted to see go somewhere. And I tell you what, if you know somebody who's a game developer or you're a game developer you've got a little game that you want featured don't hesitate to ask me or more importantly if you know of a steam game or an itch.io game or any other game like that that may not be on a game store or something that a small developer has come up with has got maybe like less than a hundred followers on twitter or some shit like that tell me about it i want to see it i want to see if it's any good we need to help each other out we don't want another sad story like this game yeah this game wasn't all that great it's even sadder than that nobody in the entire universe hardly ever played it. So nobody even got to know that it was bad. So guys, that's your assignment for the day. Tell me about some indie games. Also, tell other people about indie games. Tell everybody you know about some game that you know nobody but probably you know about. We need to minimize sad shit like this. And with that, the show is over. Oh my God, this took longer than I thought it was going to take. Well guys, that's it for this video. Man, I have got so many ideas for new episodes. I don't even know where to start. But trust me, I'm going to be making a lot more content. It's going to be a lot more frequent. And if you guys ask me nicely, yes, I might make fun of another mobile game. Who knows? Until then, I'm going to get out of here. Y'all follow me on Twitter. That's I'm Stuart K. Riley. Uh, I've got a coffee. That's K-O-F-I coffee. You can donate money to me if you think I'm worth donating money to. That is strictly a tip jar and most of the money goes 
regards to making these videos better or getting games to try out for you guys. Now that all that's said and done, I'm going to get out of here. My name's Stuart K. Riley, and I'm out of here. See y'all. Also, yes, I will release these cutscenes by themselves at some point.